Ancient Greece is one of the most studied and discussed civilizations in human history. However, among the many topics and aspects of this unique culture, the life of male concubines remains less well-known and mysterious. In ancient Greece, the male concubine had a special place in society. He was a young man in a sexual relationship with an older man. This relationship may have been due in part to customs where young men lived together with warrior mentors, learning from them the art of war and gaining life experience. Such unions were often called kalokagathos. Kalokagathos is an ancient Greek term that combines two words, kaloka, beautiful, and gathos, good. In a broad sense, it is the ideal of the ancient man, combining physical beauty and strength, spiritual and moral perfection. Kalokagathos was a key concept in ancient Greek culture and upbringing, especially during the period of classical Greece, V4 centuries BC. In the context of educating young men, Kalokagathos implied a relationship between learning, sports, and moral development. Mentors, often male concubines, played a key role in shaping Kalokagathos in their students, imparting knowledge and values that helped them become productive members of society. The education and training of young men took place in a variety of fields, including philosophy, the arts, rhetoric, and warfare. At the same time, their relationships were often colored by sexual motives, which has drawn some criticism from contemporaries and subsequent historians. Living together allowed young men to learn quickly from their mentors and to observe them in practice. Military drills, tactics, and strategy were passed down from the older generations to the younger ones, which helped preserve and develop military traditions and culture. The relationship between Patroclus and Achilles is one of the most famous and discussed examples of male concubines in Greek mythology. Their story is told in Homer's epic work, The Iliad. Although their relationship is not the main theme of the epic, it plays an important role in the plot and character development. Patroclus and Achilles were not just comrades in arms and battle buddies, but close friends who loved and respected each other. According to the myth, Patroclus was older than Achilles and was his mentor and guardian during their military training under Chiron, the centaur and famous teacher of the heroes. In the Iliad, Homer does not explicitly describe the sexual side of their relationship, but many scholars and literary critics believe that erotic feelings existed between them. This is based on the way they expressed their love and devotion to each other and their reactions to each other's deaths. One of the most famous moments in their story is the death of Patroclus. In the Iliad, Patroclus takes on the armor of Achilles and goes to the battlefield to support the Achaean warriors against the Trojans. However, Patroclus is killed by Hector, the Trojan hero. The death of Patroclus awakens deep sorrow and anger in Achilles, which becomes a turning point in the plot of the Iliad. Achilles decides to avenge the death of his beloved friend and engages Hector in battle. After victory, Achilles destroys Hector's body, but is later begged to give it to his enemies for burial. Achilles agrees, and this symbolizes his reconciliation with his own death and fate. Another example of such alliances is the relationship between Alexander the Great and Hepatean. They are rightly regarded as some of the most famous and celebrated male friendships in history. Hepatean was Alexander's concubine and confidant and close friend. Their friendship began as children, when they studied together in the school founded by Aristotle for young Macedonian aristocrats. Alexander and Hepatean were linked not only by a sexual relationship, but also by a deep spiritual communion which played an important role in their joint campaigns and conquests. Hepatean took an active part in all Alexander's military campaigns and held important positions in his army and administration. One of the most moving stories of their friendship occurred during Alexander's campaign to the east when they faced many difficulties and dangers together. In one of the battles, Hepatheon saved Alexander's life when he protected him from an enemy warrior who tried to kill the Macedonian king. This act of selfless devotion and courage only strengthened the bond between Alexander and Hepatheon and showed the sincerity of their feelings for each other. Alexander was deeply moved by this act and considered Hepatheon his most loyal and devoted friend. Unfortunately, Hepatheon died in 324 BC during a battle in India. Alexander was devastated by the loss of his closest friend and held a lavish funeral in his honor.
After Hepatean's death, Alexander no longer experienced such deep friendship and devotion from his other companions. Male concubines had a certain social status in ancient Greece. They were not slaves or prostitutes, but in most cases were free citizens. At the same time, their status was lower than that of adult citizens, and they were subject to certain social norms and rules. The life of male concubines was also reflected in the art and literature of ancient Greece. Images of male concubines and their relationships with adult partners can be found on various vases and frescoes. In literary works, such as plays and poems, male concubines are often mentioned and used as symbols of love, beauty, and youth. It should be noted that the practice of such sexual relations was controversial and criticized even in ancient Greek society. Some philosophers and writers, such as Plato, condemned this tradition and called for a more spiritual and non-sexual relationship between men. Others, such as Aristotle, saw such unions as normal and inherent in Greek culture. There are stories of athletes and their mentors from ancient Greece whose relationships may have been similar to those between male concubines. Xenophonte, the ancient Greek historian and philosopher, mentions the story of the Olympic victor Cleomachus of Phleontes, who was also known as the handsome man and male concubine. Cleomachus was the winner of the Olympic Games in the pentathlon, a contest involving running, jumping, discus throwing, javelin throwing, and wrestling in 348 BC. However, Cleomachus's involvement with other men has been described by Xenophonte as a common practice rather than direct involvement in a young man's educational process. The role of male concubines in military affairs may have played an important role in the social life of ancient Greece. There is an opinion that the close relationship between men and their concubines contributed to the creation of strong and committed military alliances. An example of such an alliance is the Sacred Squad of Thebes, the Sacred Squad of Thebes was an elite military unit of 300 male hoplites who served the ancient Greek city-state of Thebes. The detachment was created in 378 BC. The unit was composed of pairs of men in love, Eromenos, a young man, and Erastes, an older and more experienced man. These couples were linked not only by military discipline, but also by romantic and emotional attachment. The increased cohesion and mutual loyalty between the soldiers was supposed to strengthen their morale and fighting spirit, making them stronger and more invincible on the battlefield. The Sacred Squad of Thebes was one of the most successful and renowned military units of its time. They achieved a number of significant victories, the most famous of which is the Battle of Leuctra in 371 BC, when the Theban Sacred Squad under the command of General Epaminondas defeated the Spartan army. This victory broke the military superiority of Sparta and established Thebes as the leading power in Greece. However, the successes of the Thebans' sacred squad did not last long. In 338 BC, Thebes was defeated by the army of the Macedonian king Philip II at the Battle of Chaeronea, and the sacred unit was destroyed. The life of male concubines in ancient Greece was complex and multifaceted. They played an important role in the upbringing and education of younger generations, but their social status and relationship with their partners caused controversy and debate. A study of this topic provides a better understanding of the cultural, social, and moral aspects of ancient Greek society and reflects the diversity and complexity of human history. That's it, friends. What would you like to see next on our channel? Tell us in the comments.